Welcome to Measuring Success Right, the official podcast of the Marriott Student Review, a podcast for students by students, where we connect the leaders of tomorrow with the issues of today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marriott Student Review. Today, our guest on the show is Jeff Item. Jeff is a student here at BYU and is part of the marketing team for the Marriott Student Review. Jeff is also a member of the United States Army and is working on applying to the supply chain program here at BYU. Jeff, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. So what are some of your responsibilities um, doing marketing for the Marriott Student Review? Yeah, so... Uh, for the Marriott Student Review, we're a business journal, and I am part. I'm the team lead for the marketing team. Um, me specifically, I work a lot with the email marketing. I've set up all of their email marketing um, so that they can you can get things like the Saturday reads and get our the different articles and our issues. Um, and so that's mainly what I focus on. But members of my team also work with the social media and managing that, making sure that we can reach out to people through th- those different channels, along with our our. Uh, physical presence you know we have we do booths and, and a couple different activities like that great how many people are in the marketing team um, right now th- right now just two of us just me and uh, I have one other girl that works with me and it's a, it's a small team but it's a uh, effective I guess <laughs> yeah that's great it seems like you guys have uh, gotten a lot done this semester so you're in the Un- United States Army what specifically do you do for that it's a great question so I, I kind of fill two roles right now um, on one side I'm in the I'm in the enlisted side I have a, an artillery unit here in Utah, and I, um, I'm on what's called a Paladin crew, which is it's like a huge, kind of looks like a tank, but it's not a tank. Uh-huh. It, uh, it's a cannon, and we, um, yeah, so I'm on, a, I'm on a Paladin crew there, but I also fulfill the role of a cadet here at BYU. I go in the BYU ROTC, which is, a, which is a fun experience. It's a preparation course that you go through while you're in college, that when you, so that when you graduate, you're able to graduate and commission as an officer in the United States Army. And then from there, you can branch into different areas in the military and do different things there. So those are the two two main roles that I hold right now. Okay. How long have you been doing those? Yeah. So I I first enlisted um, in at the end of 2020. Um, I think it was November 4th of 2020 is when I enlisted. And um, and then I went to this last summer. I spent a month out in Oklahoma, at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And I was there for my training, um, going through basic tra- basic combat training and advanced individual training. And that's where I was trained in the artillery um, to be on a paladin crew, and uh, so that that's what I that's how long I've been since about twenty the end of twenty twenty is when I when I enlisted. So you did basic training. When was that again? So that was last summer. I went from uh, May the beginning of May until the end of August. Okay. What was basic training like? I've heard it's like the hardest thing ever. What was your experience? <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't say it's the hardest thing ever. The thing about basic training is it is um, it's meant to help you kind of conform and live you know, to, to follow orders basically, right? And so they're, they're much more physically demanding things, but it's very mentally um, taxing. So it gets, it gets pretty old. Um, you get some late nights and some pretty early mornings. A lot of people yelling at you and um, people doing stupid things and everyone getting punished for it. So it's a lot of stuff like that. Um, you, it's kind of interesting because you get to meet a lot of people from all over the country, people who on People come from, you know, different, uh, they come from like Puerto Rico and, and places like that. And so you have all these people from all these different backgrounds and you put them all together and you all of a sudden you have 60 of you living in a bay and you're trying to communicate and trying to get things done and it causes a lot of uh, conflict, but it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see how uh, people overcome those conflicts. You work together to accomplish tasks. So it's, it, but it's a very, very interesting always changing environment it seems like yeah i'm sure that would be a uh, very different than anything else you'd ever done <laughs> it was it, it was i mean looking back it was a, it was a good experience it's not something i wanted to do again you know <laughs> yeah it's definitely a one-time experience but I, i'm glad i went how long were you there for so basic training is a total of 10 weeks and then after you complete basic training 
Um, at that point, you're considered a soldier. You know, mm-hmm. you know all the basics. And then from there, you go into what's called AIT or Advanced Individual Training. And at that point, you go and you're trained on your specific job. And so my specific job is called a, a, a 13 Bravo or a, a, a cannon crew member, artillery cannon crew member. And so I spent another seven weeks um, in Oklahoma being trained on, on the artillery. Wow, that's super cool. Um, what got you interested in joining the Army? That's a great question. Um, well... Um, <laughs> so uh, when I was younger, when I was 16, I decided like, I, I really wanted to be a doctor. And so I had all these plans. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to you know, go to medical school. I wanted to be a, a pediatric surgeon and I did an internship and it just like solidified all that for me. And then I found it pretty quick that college is pretty expensive. And so I got to BYU and I, uh, realized after my two semesters, I was like, man, I don't have any money for this. Yeah. So I started like, considering my options to join the military. And uh, well, I started considering my options of how to pay for school. And the military was a, I mean, I've, I've always known that you know, that the military paid for your school. And so I thought, okay, well, it's a good option. Um, I wasn't too sure about it. And then I uh, um, I was dating my, my, now my wife, I was dating my girlfriend at the time. And we uh, were thinking about getting married. And I didn't know how I was going to pay for school. And we, we actually ended up breaking up because she was, she wanted to make sure that she wanted to get married, so I spent about two months breaking up, broken up, I should say. And uh, in that that two months, I started really looking into joining the military to pay for my school because this was the summertime, fall was coming. I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this upcoming semester. And so I uh, started looking at recruiters, and and yeah, and so I, I joined mostly for, in the beginning to pay for to pay for school because I and I knew that they'd pay for medical school as well. Uh-huh. And. Uh, so I, I enlisted. My my wife ended up getting mar- we ended up getting married, and then um, I ended up going to basic training. And AIT came back. And realized I didn't want to be a doctor anymore, <laughs> which was yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Because I'm like, okay, well, I just joined the military to be to pay for medical school and pay for my schooling. Then I don't want to be a doctor. And uh, but you know, I don't, I don't regret it. Looking back, I, I would I would still I join the military again. I, I really enjoyed my time. So that, that that's the main reason I joined. And now now I'm in because I really enjoy. Um, doing all, all the army stuff, I really, I really enjoy getting to go out in the field and um, and do all the the fun things that comes with being in the army. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that uh, story of joining because you wanted to go to medical school and then realizing you want to do the army, not medical yeah, school. Kind of, kind of <laughs> trap myself there. Yeah, they trap you on that one. <laughs> How long do you want to keep doing this? Um, that, that's another good question. A question I'm not sure I have the answer to. Uh, so my commitments to the military, when you enlist, you, you commit for six years, um, minimum is about six years. Well, that's, I, I take it back. That's, that's how long my, my contract is, uh-huh. is six years. But when you graduate from college and you become an officer through the ROTC, you have, um, your, uh, your commitment is, a like, I think it's a minimum four year, four to five years. And so the minimum I'll be, um, close to 10 years by the time my, my commitments through. Um, at that point, I'll have to kind of reevaluate. I, I would like to probably stay a full 20 years, um, have a complete military career, but kind of, it depends on a lot of things on my, my civilian career, depends on my family, how it is on them. So we'll, uh, it's tough to, tough to answer that one. Yeah, no, that, that's cool. So is 20 years considered like a full military career? Yeah, 20 years. Once you stay in for 20 years, at that point, you can receive your, your retirement benefits. And, okay. And so that's, that's considered your full military career. Cool. How is your life different now um, that you're in the army? You're actively participating in that kind of stuff than it was before when you had not um, joined that. Mm, that's it's changed a lot. Um, well, I think that first off, it it plays a big role on myself and my wife. Um, they always say that. I mean, you know, if you're if you're married, it's not just you that's joining the army; it's it's your spouse as mm-hmm. well. And I've definitely felt that. Um, I spend a lot of weekends away during training. Um, and this month alone, I've spent a total of uh, like 12 days. This no, I, Between this month and last month, about 12 days in the field. Wow. And uh, on top of school and having my wife at home. And so it's definitely, it's, it's time consuming, definitely. Um, along with that, ROTC is, is a program that you're doing during the day. And so we have labs once a week that are a couple hours long. And I have a class for that as well. And so it's I'm very very involved, and it definitely adds to the to the workload that's already on my plate. Um, it also puts you in a very unique um, 
how should I say, very unique, just living circumstances. You you really you get to know people that you never get to know. Oh, for sure. Out, outside of the military, people who are very, um, you just get outside of your normal social circle, I guess. So, so you get to know a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of cool people. Yeah, that's super cool. So you have a lot of things to to balance in your life. You have you know the ROTC, the Army, your wife, school. How do you manage all of that? Uh, some days it doesn't feel like I do manage it very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that I, it takes a lot of planning. I, I spend a lot of time. Um, my, my weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I try to spend a couple hours planning out my week and try to map out everything that I have. Uh, I think that's definitely something that gets me gets me through is planning. Um, I also just try to keep a good attitude. I think that the military, it's, it's pretty difficult. You know, there, there's some, it's pretty taxing and it takes a lot out of you. But I definitely try to keep a good, good attitude and try to make the best of it. Um, I've competed in the ROTC with all the other cadets, and I actually got awarded to go to a school called the Air Assault, um, which is a which is a military school where you get to learn about uh, how to work with Blackhawks, repelling, and um, like sling loads, like attaching things to Blackhawks and a pa- and Chinooks, and and get to work with kind of like that, I mean, those those types of things. Yeah. And and so that's I'm really excited to go do that. And so, so when is that going to be? So that'll be this summer. I'll go okay. in June. It's a ten day course. Um, and so I'm really excited to do that. And so I just try to, I guess how I manage it is, is uh, just trying to keep a good good attitude and looking for the best situations possible and uh, make, make the best of the situation. Yeah, that's super awesome. So obviously you've met a ton of people in the Army. You know, like you said, during basic training, people from all over the place came and you were living with them and doing all these uh, practice courses and that kind of stuff with them. So you've met a ton of people. What would you say makes somebody successful in the Army? Being successful in the army, um, I think that when it comes to the military, um, the military really looks for, for leaders, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean the commanders, the officers, the guys that are making all the decisions. Being successful in the military is being a good leader, being able to um, help those around you, be able to do the right thing, um, especially when things get really hard. So I think success in the military is ultimately comes from from leadership, being a good leader, learning how to um, be empathetic and to to, to lead by example, do the hard things so that other people are able to do that as well. So I'd say, yeah, definitely leadership is what being a good leader makes you successful in the military. I like that. What are some of the qualities you see in good leaders that you've worked with? Yeah, so I that's recently I had a. Well, my, my first section chief, when I came back in, in the Army, uh, when you get in the artillery, they, they have some different like vocabulary. So I'm in what's called a section. Uh-huh. And my section chief, his name was uh, Staff Sergeant Brown. So he passed away about two months ago. But he was an amazing leader. And something I loved about him was he was he led by example. One thing that's pretty common when you get leaders in the military is that they're really good at delegating. You know, that hey, like, tell the, guy, the lower guys, like, hey, go do this, go do that. But one thing I loved about Staff Sergeant Brown was he was always there with us doing kind of like the the grunt work, kind of the stuff that yeah. normally people in his position wouldn't be doing. You know, he was always with us under the gun, uh, fixing things if he had a problem, taking care of it. He was very hands-on and led by example. And that's something that I, I really I really looked up to him for. Um, yeah, him passing away. He passed away about, two, about like I said, about two months ago. Sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah, it was, it, was a hard, it was a hard loss. We definitely sad to sad to lose him but uh he definitely made a big uh very very big impression on us so yeah sounds like he has that's also something i've seen with some of the leaders i've worked with in various settings in school internships and other type of things it's just like those who lead by example are always the best um so in your personal life and just for you how do you define success um or how do you measure success I think that success can be measured in, in two kinds of ways. I think that first is the, a pretty basic answer that, that success comes from achieving like a specific goal or, or desire, you know. And I think that can be, I mean, that's in, in business and in life. We use that definition pretty, um, pretty commonly. But I think when it comes to people and it makes a successful person, I think that um, life, our goals change, life changes, who we are changes. And so those goals change. And, and so it's difficult to measure the success of our lives based on a specific goal or outcome. And so I think that, um, success really comes from being able to be proud of, of what you've done, you know, 
whether whether it was your intend intended desire or goal, being able to say, hey, I did this, and I'm I'm proud that I did that. I worked hard for this, and and just being happy happy with what you've done at the end of the day. I think that's I think that's how you define success in a in a person's life. I think that's a great way to measure success. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us, Jeff, and thanks for being on the show. It's been great having you. Thanks. I've been happy to be here, and uh, we'd love to have you guys subscribe to our email list, and you can find that on our website at the Marriott Student Review. Um, and to subscribe to get some of our, our cool articles and, and uh, Saturday reads that are coming up. Well, and thank you to all who listened to today's episode. And like Jeff said, go subscribe to our email list. There's a lot of cool content that we're working on, and I think um, you guys will all really enjoy it. So thank you all. <music>